Splatterhouse is a classic and kinda underrated 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up released for the arcades by Namco back in 1988. Except I'm not talking about Splatterhouse. Hell, I'm not even talking about its sequels or the forgotten gritty reboot. Instead, I'll be talking about a relatively obscure spin-off slash chibi parody of the game released exclusively in Japan for the Famicom. Now the game in question is Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti, released in 1989 for the Famicom and developed by Now Production. Fun fact, this was apparently the first Splatterhouse game released on a home console. So Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti is a 2D side-scroller where you play as a small chibi version of Rick. This Jason Voorhees lookalike who is on a quest to rescue this girl named Jennifer from the Pumpkin King. After he and the Pumpkin King were both resurrected from the grave by lightning. Is it just me, or is that pretty similar to Friday the 13th Part 6? Now if you've played any of the other Splatterhouse games, you might notice that Rick moves a bit faster in this game, at least compared to how pretty slow he was in the original. So anyways, your only form of attack is just a simple swing of your axe, rather than punching and kicking, like in the original Splatterhouse. The axe itself could very easily kill a bunch of enemies. And after you kill a bunch of enemies, you can even gain experience points that can build up your health bar, which allows you to take more hits. Now if you get hit by an enemy, you fly like a million miles back, and your invincibility frames are also extremely short. But at least you'll always be able to gain some health back by simply eating a piece of candy that occasionally drops from an enemy. Although you only gain one bar from eating one piece of candy. At least there's the occasional burger that restores most of your health. Now in every level of the game, you face off against a spooky enemy. Like flying possessed books, flying possessed knives with headless chickens attacking you, this possessed girl whose head comes off and starts attacking you with her possessed chairs also attacking you. And then there's this vampire who isn't possessed in the first level of the game that is obviously a blatant Michael Jackson reference. With a song that's very similar to Thriller, and I mean it's literally called This Sounds Familiar. Just take a listen for yourself. Now for the vampire fight itself, you don't even fight the vampire at all. Instead, you just fight the zombies he dances with. You basically do the same thing with this frustrating giant rat that spits out mini rats that I ended up losing to over and over again. Oh, I also forgot to mention that you only have one life and four continues, which allows you to pick up from the beginning of the stage you died on. But thankfully there's a short password system that allows you to go to any stage in the game. So in the end, Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti is definitely worthy of being a hidden gem for the Famicom. Now if you're interested in playing the game itself, it's available to play on the Namco Museum Archives Volume 1 collection. It frequently goes on sale and it is 100% worth it for including some nifty NES Namco games, as well as including an English translated version of 1 Paku Graffiti. Wow, this is also the first game I reviewed that actually has an official re-release. Anyways, thanks for having me featured in this video. Kid Dracula, known as Akuma Jo Special Boku Dracula Kun, is a very unique entry in the Castlevania franchise due to how radically different it is from the other games in the series. Now, similar to other games such as Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti and Parodius, Kid Dracula is a chibi parody and spin off of Castlevania that was released exclusively in Japan on the Nintendo Famicom back in 1990, with a Game Boy version releasing worldwide in 1993 that pulls an Evil Dead 2 by being both a sequel and a remake. But today, I'll only be talking about the original Famicom version. 
So in the game you take control of none other than Kid Dracula, who is either a younger version of series villain Dracula or possibly his son Alucard or maybe an entirely different character. Look, this game's place in the Castlevania timeline makes no sense at all. Since it takes place like 10,000 years in the future despite not looking anything like the future. You know what, the game obviously isn't canon and it's not meant to be taken seriously so let's just move on because it doesn't matter to the game's quality. Anyways, the game follows Kid Dracula who was awakened from his 10,000 year slumber to take on a challenge from a rival demon named Galamoth for the title and throne of the self-proclaimed Demon King. Now, the game itself is quite different from Castlevania, since it plays more like Mega Man because Kid Dracula here shoots fireballs at enemies rather than using a whip. Your basic fireball attacks allow you to throw three at a time, similar to Mega Man. And just like the Mega Man sequels, you can charge up your attack by holding B to throw a giant fireball, which allows for enemies who take more than one hit to die faster, as well as dropping a coin that you can use in four minigames after completing each level that I'll eventually get into later. Drakki can also gain new abilities after defeating bosses which can be pretty useful in some levels, such as being able to turn into a bat for a limited amount of time, or having your fireball scatter which can be very helpful at times. Now unlike Mega Man, Kid Draki can shoot in 4 different directions, which can be very helpful for killing certain enemies in the game. Now level 1 does take place in a castle, similar to a lot of other Castlevania games. And you of course platform across the castle in various locations that feel very familiar and at home in classic Castlevania, while fighting cutesy versions of monsters and the kind of enemies that you'd find in classic Castlevania. Also there's this boss with a very questionable symbol on his head in the Japanese version. Now that's basically the only part of the game that sort of feels like a Castlevania game, because afterwards you'll be platforming levels that take place in the sky with roller coasters, snowy and icy areas with annoying fucking spikes that can kill you in one fucking hit, a bunch of other levels that take place in various locations, and the city where you fight UFOs and Spider-Man for some reason. Man, what does this game think it is? Revenge of Shinobi? Also, why wasn't this version of Spider-Man in any of the Spider-Verse movies? Ultimately, you fall onto a subway train where you find Jason Voorhees himself and his many clones. Now, much like Konami's other games on the NES, Kid Dracula has an amazing soundtrack that for some reason doesn't get much love when compared to most of Konami's other stuff on the NES. I mean, it's so catchy and memorable that I actually enjoyed listening to the soundtrack while I was writing the script to this very review. Now, when it comes to negatives about the game, all I can really say is that I do feel that the game can feel a little difficult at times, even despite gaining more health from all these hearts that can be found in each level. And personally, I am not a fan of getting hit and flying a million miles back. But this is Castlevania after all, so that's to be expected. I'm also not a fan of the amount of pits there are in the game, or how Draki basically has to jump directly from the edge in order to make it across to another platform. Finally, my only other complaint is that I really hate how the bat controls, because I swear it feels like you're drifting either up and down when you're controlling the bat, and what makes it kind of worse is that if you dare get hit or touch anything, you turn back to normal which could potentially get you killed depending on the situation you're in. Oh yeah, in case you were wondering about the minigames I mentioned earlier, there's four of them and they kind of feel randomly generated when you select them. In a lot of these minigames, your goal is to obviously get more lives in various different ways, depending on which minigame gets selected. And I do personally think that these are nice ways of getting more lives, as well as being a nice little break from the main game. So in the end, I really enjoyed Kid Dracula and found it to be better than Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti, as well as being a pretty enjoyable and interesting anomaly in the Castlevania franchise, simply because of its gameplay, great art style, good soundtrack, and because of how different it is. And honestly, I appreciate it for doing that and being different because I'm the kind of person who likes stuff like that. Now if you want to play Kid Dracula for yourself, it is available on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection that I'd recommend you buy. Since the game is fully translated into English, and because it's an overall really good collection for classic Castlevania, that does frequently go on sale. But overall, Kid Dracula is a really good game that you should check out if you really like classic Konami games, as well as obscure, niche, and very underrated games that most people don't talk about. Anyways, thanks for having me on the show again. 